stuff is truly hot off the presses. In 2017, um, folks at Google、um, proposed what is generally now called attention, which is a feature that underlies AI, whereby you can sort of figure out dynamically what the relationship is between words in an English paragraph or an English text or really any human language. And giving weight to words in that way has actually fed a lot of these new large language models. In 2020, did OpenAI publish its GPT model? And most recently, in 2022, did ChatGPT itself come out? And what underlies what we're talking about here is technically this big mouthful, generative pre trained transformers, whereby the purpose of these AIs is to generate stuff. They've been pre trained on like, lots of publicly available data. And the goal is to transform the user's input into ideally correct output. And if you see where I'm going with this, that's the GPT. In ChatGPT, which itself was never meant to be like a branded product. It's a little weird that GPT has entered the human vernacular, but what it does is、uh, evokes exactly these ideas. So here's a sample paragraph, for instance.、Uh, Massachusetts is a state in the New England region of the Northeastern United States. It borders on the Atlantic Ocean to the east. The state's capital is dot, 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 essentially inviting us to answer now this question. Well, historically, prior to 2017 ish, it was actually pretty hard. For machines to learn that, oh, this mention of Massachusetts is actually related to this mention of state. Why? Because they're pretty far apart. This is in a whole new sentence. And unless it knows already what Massachusetts is, Is and technically it's a commonwealth, it might not give much attention to these two words, too much weight to the relationship thereof. But if you train these GPTs on enough data and you start to break down the input into sequences of words, for instance, well, you might have a, an array or a list of words here in CS50 speak. You might be able to figure out based on your training data. That if you number all of these words from like 1 to 27 or whatnot in this case, you could represent them mathematically somehow. As an aside, the way that these large language models are representing words like Massachusetts literally is with numbers like this. This is 1536 floating point values in a vector, aka list or array, that literally represents the word Massachusetts according to one. Of these algorithms. Let's take a step back and abstract it away as little rectangles instead, and use these little edges to imply that if there's a bolder edge here, that implies that there's really a relationship in the training data between Massachusetts and state. One of those words is giving more attention to the other, as opposed to is, which is maybe a thin line because there's not much going on there between Massachusetts and is, as opposed to those two nouns in that case. All of this input, all of these vectors are fed into large neural networks that have lots and lots of inputs, far more than one and two and three. The output of which ideally then is the answer to this question or a whole answer to your question. And so when you ask the duck a question, you ask ChatGPT the question, essentially the software is sort of navigating this neural network, trying to find the best path through it to give you the most correct answer.